Hello, everyone around the world. My name is Petru Yuga. I'm originally from Romania and I'm teaching in Mannheim State University of Music um, in Germany and in Lausanne, Switzerland. I'd like to present you a part of my scale system that I developed myself. Um, there was accumulating experience during my evolution and the um, experiences I had have during, during my studies and even during teaching and I I arrived to this um, uh, scale system. Primarily, I was from the way it's written and also the way it's a bit structured. I was inspired by the Ivan Galamian scale system with the dots, um, and also maybe the way he used the bow strokes. But the rest is what I adapted as like made it for, for myself on the base. Um, the idea is generally to marriage all the experience and all the schools I have got in touch with. So I started with Simandre and then I continued with um, quasi the Simandre tradition through uh, my teacher, Johan Kepka, who was a student of Josef Brunner, and Brunner was a student of Madensky, and Madensky was the successor um, of Simandl in Vienna. So that's the tree, how it works. But so then I, I got kind of this part of the, of the school. But of course, during my studies and my traveling um, in Europe and in around the world, I got, um, a lot of feedbacks and a lot of experience that I could observe what things really works well and what can I take and uh, put it to my playing, enrich my playing. So uh, to be as short as possible, in general it goes about playing more close hand, more naturally hand form and also um, stretched or let's say distributed fingering. So it's about these two extremes that I'm, it's made my scale system. So this is one point. The second point is that I develop the scales in that way that I, I use first transversal playing, so over the strings and the linear. Um, playing so that's why my scale starts first over four strings and, uh, and then goes tricks the linear so one string so every string and then I combine them um, with linear and transversal so I'll try to be a um, uh, to be as short as possible because the scale system book it's about 10 chapters and I'll tell you which are the chapters. First is scales over four strings. Then secondly is scales over one string and then scales over four strings in thumb position. And then fourth scales uh, over three octaves and fifth broken intervals. Um, Sixth is scales with different variations. Seventh is um, arpeggios in two octaves. Eighth is arpeggios in three octaves. And ninth, uh, ninth chapters is um, chromatic scales. And the tenth, the last, is whole tone scales. So, of course, this is a quite a thick book. And I'm not going to talk today about, about it 
all, but I will just talk the main, the main, main uh, idea of it. So, how do I organize this position? It's the call position that means they are fixed. So, um, the Simandl needs to count it diatonically yeah, on the G string. So, the G string, and then you have the A, and then you go diatonically yeah, and in its main position. So, like, you know, it first was your second, third, fourth, fifth. Sixth, seventh. Um, I do count like the violins. I do count uh, the positions from the E strings diatonically. So that means the first note, it's F, and then goes G is second, A is um, third, fourth. Uh, no, sorry, it's first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Sixth, seventh. Um, so, and just because you know, with the half positions, to say the start of the half position, there is no uh, half position to any um, string instrument, let's say violin or cello. So, um, but we have intermediate positions. So, let's say half position, like you have one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. Three and a half, four, because of the half tone, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven. So it's just structured uh, in, in this, this way, for, on, up to the E string. But that's not really relevant. It's just the way maybe to describe it. Good, so I would like to go to the main. Um, so details what how I see it first how to put a hand and how to be with the arm um, um, with the fingers on the bass on the strings so actually we're a big guitar with the bow so we um, we have to to think that we are going to play all the fingers uh, and all the positions and all the strings. Um, but the way we come to the strings is very important. So, for example, a school like um, Streicher does propose to put the hand like B, E, B flat, no, B flat, E, B flat, um, C bemol, Mi, C bemol. Um, and that's the right attitude. What I what I think it's the opposite. It's more because also the bodhisattva was more like this than like this. So actually, why? It's not a let's say the religion of it. <laughs> it's a really practical means. So everything I'm I'm saying here, I try to be as uh, Course, as honest as possible and sincere and it was just really experiencing myself so that really makes sense to me so actually it's everything taking from everything so um, this is exists also but mainly I do start with this one because of the weaker fingers so I can have more weight on the weaker fingers and not to, to strengthen them and this so um, Firstly, like this, so like C, E, G sharp. So that's actually the where the elbow should be to play um, to play on the fingerboard. So uh, that's what really very important. It's going to be described uh, in the book. Um, also, the way I use the thumb behind or not put it really um, in the middle of the neck but a bit to the side that um, I avoid pulling the base this direction but more um, embrace it and hang it to, my, to the center of myself so um, and then also it's not um, 
how to say, breaks when you when you shift. So actually, the time I use it just like a control of uh, of the movement, but not as much as uh, against pressure of the left hand. It's more against the shoulder that this happens. This uh, phenomena, this tension between that we hold the string. We go down, sit down, and it's against the against the el, the shoulder, and the elbow makes the shifting, of course, together then with the shoulder. So that's why it's important where we put the thumb. Um, this is important detail, and generally, I try to avoid of hanging down. I try to embrace a bit the string at the beginning, not that much, but to to press, to hold it, the string. And of course, we hang down, but hold, just to make this, let's say, Japanese bridge in the fingers, that this tonic. The way we take the string up, it just doesn't break. Of course, will come in my scale system also the, to play babe, and so um, what we need a lot of orchestra to play really flat. But doesn't mean that we always have to play like this, so that we just play what we need. Like I said, it's a bit like in a guitar. So, this is one point. I'll go now to the first um, first chapter, and it starts. It's over four strings, four strings, and it goes stepwise. So you see, um, there are twelve notes up and twelve notes down. This I I inspire myself. Um, from Galamian, who used this number because of uh, you can practice uh, different bow strokes, not only binar and ternar, but um, yeah, you not only binar, but you can use it for ternar. So that means you can play two legato, three legato, four legato, six legato, eight legato, twelve, twenty-four. So um, that's why. It starts the first step actually with 12 notes up. I repeat this note to have 12. And this again to have 12. Of course, this can be practiced like, a, like Galamian he does. So first four legato. Very slowly from 45 to 40. just to relax sorry for the B and then uh, six and then uh, sixteen six twelve So this kind of can practice every step the same. So with this way, different strokes, of course, I do uh, have um, points where I don't use the book of Galamian with so many rhythmical and combinations. I just give uh, the most important ones. Um, and if someone really wants to have fun with combinations, then can use the book of um, Galamian, the rhythmic. So there's a second volume. Then the fun starts actually when you go then the second step. So actually it'll be second position for my counting. So here we can.
that's the second step. So here it starts to come some important details the way uh, should be worked and played, what makes us uh, more stable. So the idea is to hold the fingers close to the string. That's anyway mainly uh, um, proposition for the students to avoid kind of going up and play too pianistic. So articulated yes, but close to the string. Okay, this one point. A second point is uh, was very important to use this kind of cold pivot. So that the thumb stays. So actually, it's kind of, let's say, one region, one area. It's not position. The position is when it's really fixed. And then if we play an area, we kind of connect with the half position, one and a half position. On staying with the thumb as a pivot. And this is very important. Um, can be, and I propose to the students who are too strongly playing uh, with the thumb and pressing too much, I tell, I tell them to use another pivot. That means take it away and make it from the, sh from the elbow. So only, not with the thumb here. To avoid stiffness here. So um, to feel this to, to the shoulder, the direction, and it's more embraced, so then we can use make it shifting half tone uh, half position that, but not for, with the thumb so that depends on the students but of course finally it would be with the thumb another important detail is who which finger is making the shifting so <clears throat> I do have um, I do explain them like I was learning from the violins, um, they have um, shifting on on the old finger or on the new finger, on the old bow or on the new bow. So in general, if we make the tache, and the expression later will be different um, the way we use. I'll explain it maybe later but then generally I use on the new bow a uh, new finger for romantic mostly and for classical I use old bow old finger. But it, I just listen to the music and I do shift stylistically. It's never the same. Okay so this is what was very important point uh, to what to look for um, when you practice the scales. Um, so the important points. Then it's going, so of course, it's going stepwise. There's nothing happens, it's always the same in the lower position. So then it's... earlier but I 
I think for the students and even for playing who are understanding, it's not that easy to use. The drum already from here, but when you're sitting, you have this against uh, the instrument, the, the knees and the, the legs, so you can hold it um, and you can have it here sit, balance it with uh, the body. So that's why actually I propose it from here because of the hand also size, actually everybody can play from here with these notes. I never heard, have, have had a student who uh, couldn't play this. So, and that is an important part. So the transition is like there's the two last notes of the uh, um, before the time position. So then it goes. Of course, the shifting is making the one. And now you see there, I write time position, and down it's explained making blockwise. Blockwise. That means we have to think three notes together that means when i go here to one i put already the f on the other string so uh, it's very important to do this during this case over four strings to anticipate the time for the other string so never be too late so i'll explain you slowly so connecting we have the f there and now when you play this so G, we go already with the thumb on another string. So, so. then we anticipate the fingers. And of course, it's very important to let the weight of the of the arm and again the shoulder a bit, but down. Never against and not down. So it's be against but down. Not to press, to step, to tense which is a hold. So this is the important detail during shift with one and go in the block together, three notes together. And then when you're on the G, think three notes together. And when you're gonna see three notes together. When you come back, it's easy because the third finger has already time to go two notes to go on the other string. So, so it's easier when you come back, but more difficult when you go up. And then let's go stepwise. Now the way I do press the, the, the string down, uh, tendentially I don't do much tension, but I do hold it to my center. To me and a bit and breast to keep actually the tension and not do too much because then it's changing the intonation and it's too much tension in the arm but in generally i hold so it's down not too much the side is down but it's in breast of course when i go here i go with the tongue another one so string. Of course, practicing this slowly, it's very important, not that fast, I just do it in a faster way, just to not to be too long, but in generally... Expressive way of like to playing, but it's a way more to reduce the tension, not to get really tense. Of course, first no vibrato, no no vibrato, but just a little bit to get this uh, spring of the arm. So and then goes. Many 
people were asking, but you know, it's very hard to play on the lower strings, you know, on the thicker. Of course, it's physique, so it's more tension, and they're thicker. So, but what I do, um, I try to avoid to go up here and to do from, from up. I do really concentrate everything in center of myself. So, and probably I'll go not, un, not so low with the arm, a little bit higher that I can um, have a good sitting on the string. So a bit lower, it's kind of too much tension. Depends on the passage, but in general, a little bit higher to have a bit more weight and the finger will be closer to the elbow. The more I go like this, the farther it is, so it's harder if we go like too far. And that's why it's not, it's not good to play too far from, from, the, um, from the elbow. But of course, some parts can be practiced and I will show you this will be a part of it. What I also use, but first, first the natural position, uh, more, uh, let's say, economize the energy, more focus together um, like I said at the beginning it's kind of um, scale system what develops the natural hand shape with more close hand and this becomes bigger and bigger and also a bit farther from the from the uh, contact point close a bit far so this uh, depends uh, of the situation of the piece but uh, in the scale system, I do really practice precisely every every movement. So um, that's what happened with the scales on the four strings, the details, um, then comes back and with different strokes, rhythms. That's important, like practicing the detaché, quarto legato, detaché, martelé, um, spiccato, yeah, these are, are very important uh, ball strokes, what I do play, practice, myself and with the students. Okay, so um, this goes back, then I do treat in the second chapter the linear playing, so on the one string. And here also um, we the details um, what is really important for developing a good uh, a good feeling of the instrument with the intervals and the way we playing on the string the way we put the fingers the way we put the arm so it's more uh, with I just start so one one string uh, scales with one string with one finger two fingers scales three fingers scales four finger scales so I do start um, the scales with um, one finger and I start with the first note on the G string, the A. So here what is important is to have the same details what I talked in the before, in the first chapter, uh, to avoid this way, but more this way than this way. That means the shoulder, the way we use, so have to push it against. And it's more cycling. Also, the way we shift after will be more round, more cycling. So, uh, and then, of course, I have to press round the fingers uh, on the string and be with other fingers over the string. It doesn't have to be played, but it should be over the string. And then I go uh, six notes up. So with every finger, you see I stay with the fingers over, even I play with the first. So I try to keep like, a, you know, like a xyle, um, to keep the continuity of the movement and to feel uh, the distances of the tones, half tones. So this one thing, and um, you see that I do it with the right hand is that I connect on the new bow. So I mean, of course, there will be 
uh, on bow stroke you see um, they're up written by hand that we can do a stop with break that means this actually it's, it's will be in the all bow also to anticipate uh, better the distance to stop the right and do the left and then play it. so this kind of uh, correlation study you can we can do it here already uh, and then if you come in the fourth then it's kind of the, I'll practice them on the on the um, new ball <laughs> first to to play it actually on the new ball because then it, students are going to focus um, not to release the so the tone all the time so that it will be more legato and to feel the the the, the, the interval the ways so we practice after every finger so what is really reminding not to go out and play a finger like this but just really be with the fingers over the strings even even sometime with fourth but of course that's a bit like not so natural position is for these fingers if I, we go too much in front but the idea is really to get all the fingers over the string so and then you see there's um, two fingerings A and B so I do A I did A now with one so then it's with second and then maybe with fourth and I replace with third and then I with second again and then with one again just not to get tired so, so I just distribute the fingerings but then is the second fingering B what that makes things interesting that um, I play with every finger two notes students practice with vibrato to avoid stiffness so <laughs> well, it's important not to go in this ratio but to go really in front to pull the bass inside and not to be under the bass but a bit on the same level so that is a very important detail that, that we when you practice this um, and the same over strings with the vibrato it helps to to feel also to, you know like when you um, tennis you never wait for the for the ball like very tense so you can uh, they move always before and then they hit <laughs> so it's a bit the same <laughs> say this I was learning from Maestro Gary Carr I never I had once a lesson with him it was, was a, a huge pleasure and honor for me to have the lesson with him in Switzerland but I just observe his uh, way of using the left hand um, and this is one part and this is scale or one string 
and one finger and two fingers what I also delegated to him um, and also uh, to thank you for your great uh, um, baggage of information and, and love and and, uh, and I'll say um, passion you brought it bring it to us for the base word thank you so um, I use this in a way that really so Distances, this um, I kind of practice with the strings to get this um, feeling of the interval, feeling the way we deal with the string, feeling we shifting the way we hold the hand. So this really a scale. What happens uh, help, can help a lot of uh, developing the, the skills to go much higher. Okay, so um, this is goes on and on until high. So actually here. Either you stay with the hand a bit like this, or some people stay really they don't go up. They go really go more closer like this with the hand. And uh, so like so, or they go closer or they go farther. The way he used the the, the the distance and for vibrato too. So the far, the closer from the elbow, palm, and the way he used the energy from the elbow. So this is you can develop here the way we want. Uh, I generally I use all of them depends of the passage. So not not only this. Also this, and I do use also the larger hand. But this is um, I'll explain you what is coming now. The next when you use it in thumb position, one finger in thumb position, because here we can practice close hand. hand or we can I do practice the student that they open the hand so that means like they stay with the thumb behind they don't go inside or like this they just really stay and they practice to be more more wide with the hand so actually what I learned from pruners uh, school Romanian school is more open hand and it's more like cello connect distributed fingering I don't call them crap okay um, this distribution so to be organized the way we use this word but this I come next now we're still with one thing so actually either we play open hand or close hand so Transmit the, uh, the, 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 the hole in the hand inside without to move it to turn it, it just really stays over the string. So, this we can practice in the um, one, one, one finger uh, scale in thumb position. Of course, this can be practiced like it's written on all strings and all tonalities, not only C major. Um, of course, like for example, also can be also Makes really fun because this you have really it's really fat and you have to learn to mobilize in the 
the body of course i don't talk now about right hand in the book i'm going to talk about important issues but the scale is about that hand. so you see the way we hold the string it's all the, these details um, are coming again so of course another details when you play the other strings is that when we go up i do hang a bit like this so it goes this direction kind of exaggerating and this direction back so i kind of hang and i take the string back i do take it like this so it's kind of it's a cycling too it's business cycling this is cycling too so um you have to use this circular this a or circular whatever so not to be too long i go to the um scales on one string with two fingers so here becomes again interesting it's nothing it's new it's just uh, that it's going to be practiced the same 12 notes up 12 no notes down to have the strokes there's a you know fluidity the control of the left hand of the rhythm the tempo the shifting so it's really a, a fantastic way of um, developing just you know the fingerboard and feel the bass the instrument the bass the, the music more freely so what is here um new is that we do really two fingers like so actually it stays this natural hand so again i do still i'm in the natural hand shape so uh, a really close hand yeah um so actually step stepwise stepwise goes actually kind of the same you're going to look on the score so you could could uh, follow this but I really change something when um, it still stays with no thumb uh, so here is always one one three or one two or only this like down one four one four and one three I develop now all of this there's no thumb for now so there's to have this fluidity of the one who is leading until up so that we we get this and who is leading back is the third and fourth when we make the shifting so this is important detail um what really changed a bit it's uh, when we go in a higher position because um, for example we have so <laughs> So I last notes I do uh, go on the other side of the hand. So when I go up, it's more this side, and then when I come back, I arrive there, I prepare the other side of the hand and come back. So kind of round the tension is sitting in the hand, it's more round and going to the other part of the hand and come back and then comes back in the round the other side of side of the hand. It's very important this balance. So up to here it's kind of um yeah and then we go really um like close hand so really a uh, close natural hand or we start to put a little bit also higher so with the thumb that then we put it behind one tone or a uh, uh, minor third the distance so um then you know, i stay closer so everything close or at one tone or third so yeah i stay more behind just to prepare the balance of the hands if it's in the vibrato probably i'll take it off or let it down but it stays there as support so it stays kind of behind a bit to support um, the third finger in this angle uh, that's why so it should be 
look if really helps you to put it more here. Pra big practice also like this. Big practice more down or more open. These are the relations. So I do practice all of them. Okay. It's kind of a lot of information at once. I go to three fingers. So I didn't I didn't talk about these details with uh, over four string. I do um, also when the scene are really well fixed and stable on the on the fingerboard and the natural hand used. I do use the cello technique up to the fourth um, uh, position. So actually we do like a bit like uh, non extension but uh, yeah for the hand anyway an extension for the first finger and not for the fourth finger so actually i prepare i go with the elbow in front to have this possibility to open the first finger it's like cello you know to avoid this stiffness it's more open so it's naturally so uh, sometimes four finger technique but only up to the uh, to the fourth position so I call actually until here the fourth position is bass here's more cello and here's viola and then violin <laughs> so it's really high so very sharp the way the attitude of playing the notes is more like in the violin if it's that sharp that, that high I mean uh, and it sounds of course also sharp um, so here with the, t I come with three fingers scales. Um, I use actually my system. Um, it's made in intervals. The hand shape is in intervals and modes at the same time. So actually, this is for me major third hand shape. This will be minor third. Petrarchy that calls us chromatic, semi-chromatic, and diatonic up to this. But I use up to this note. So um, this is the major minor. And then up to here, I count them also as quart. So quart with third, quart, minor third. So and then when I have quarts, I have modes. Yonian, Dorian, Trijan. The modes I use uh, for the hand in case when I need to put, of course, here not in the lower position, the fourth, which I do myself, but for the students, uh, first I do teach them from the um, from the E, not from the D. So that they really know which modes they have in the hand. So I have to be practice, of course, I have to exercises. Uh, pre-exercises for the scales what uh, does organize the hand and there's intervals and modes okay so three fingers uh, scales um, specifically it does the same um, what I said before the way I use the term it's different I don't use it always in the same uh, Position and I use it actually more to the other side, so the bone, so that I hang and have also the other string. To, I'm faster for the other string, or I put it between the bone and the nail. So these two have be, to be practiced. But uh, when it's when the thumb.
can be practiced in, on the uh, scale so one one um, one string the thumb and this point so with between the bone and the articulation bone and the, the nail and on the other side I like mostly on this side firstly because it's uh, one less articulation and then I have more power at one point and then I have I can go faster to the I have a kind of barret the thumb so it's not like always pointed but it's also like a barret so actually I use as much as possible when I need you know then I don't have uh, this from this point of view point like one position but it's really at least it's two as for sure and if I need to hold I do use it there's no limit okay so uh, no rules really that they have to own in this part but it's just what it's meant so I'm going to organize it here I do to practice that on between and, and more and more closer and you see it's for energy is different the way you have uh, energy in the arm so to come get back to the to the um, three fingers case what is here can be interesting is that um, either we go like really close hand a natural hand we start up to G no so tone that the more difficulty is here so this will come kind of preparing the four finger um, um, four finger scales that we kind of uh, distribute either we, we roll the finger to the next note or we make kind of a stretching two are possible I prefer rolling of course without to change the intonation that's the danger of this way of doing to the next note I try to hold it rolling without to change the intonation. So that's what can happen after the. And I do stay with the thumb. Also, there are two possibilities to go blockwise. We have major third, major third. And I have major thirds here. But stay with the thumb behind. To really to have a um, better, no, I cannot control. You go, but you still hold your hand, so you don't go only blockwise, but also hold. You know, you're coming back, so it's a kind of anticipation. I like this combination very much. And the next step will be. natural hand uh, and then also but also it's staying like a pivot the thumb and just giving the run note to come back so it's uh, very useful when you have certain legati and uh, fast, uh, faster passages uh, I stay the thumb down and just uh, keep it the, the string down and articulate the other fingers for example so here's a preparation already then we have in one uh, eight notes group so this big, becomes bigger and bigger so first with uh, two movements and then three move um, three movements and also with eight notes group that so we can practice a different um, not only ternach but also binach so with the eight note groups we can practice the ternach so here we have kind of the same system. Also always close hand it can be practiced and should be practiced actually for the people who are not yet flexible to open the hand. So first. And 
always this direction is the, the thumb and this direction is the, the, the third finger who is shifting. So I think that's still a new ball if you want. It's very important how you connect the notes and which timing you have. So that's you have to be practice, of course, a metronome that you have certain uh, rhythm in the movements and they're not subtle. To the what we play in music in generally we have different shifting uh, in the music depends on the music that we want to express. Like Mozart said, music is between the notes, so that I were really looking. Uh, very much of uh, to understand really this and there's a very interesting word about this because it's the way it's important like we say in other ways it's important than the goal and then for example you have to learn to con the music is between the strings so we have to learn to play between the string not only the string but between them so that's the way you learn also the scale of a four string to connect to anticipate the way we connect them it's really important Okay, so after these eight groups notes comes 12 notes, so it goes on, but here I think it's just the same. So, it's the same way that I use in the end, more like uh, sitting on the thumb and then come back in the natural hand straight. The same we can use uh, the strokes, the rhythm um, here, B9 and ten now with 12 notes. Now it comes this interesting part uh, of the system. It's what I learned in my Romanian uh, system that uh, it's more distribution. So it's not like stiffness or uh, stretching like really painful, but it's really distribution. So now this finger, four finger, um, four finger scales system, it's actually a connection between the three fingers and this major third um, to the fourth notes. This relation, this connection between the second and third finger, this is the all the, let's say the attention should be focused on this. And um, of course I do think in modes. So this is Dorian. Dorian. Okay, I showed before, but I start now in the D, so it's, it's Dorian. And now there are two fingerings. So either, like I said before, Sit not not tense and but sit with weight and distribute from the second finger to the third finger and uh, yeah and there is one two possibility either we go like I said rolling with weight or a bit stretching and also with the weight but making a bit like this. Depends. I mean, some cellists make really this. I like connected. Yes. I mean, I, both actually are possible and both are good. But if I play fast, I, I I don't have time to do this because I come out of the of the the movements. There are too move, too much movement. The more movements you do, the worse it becomes. So we have to really just exactly what we need. That's why we practice in groups. And that's why that the, the system, the the, tone, the scale system. Um, so this is important when the four, four finger 
uh, scale, does this distribution. It's attentively practiced. And like I said before, there are two fingerings. Of course, the one students he cannot really do this yet. I do with them. And this they can do. You know, like have the natural one tone and make shifting with one. Three back. It's not written, but it's how it's going to come. It can be written. This can be can say it the same. It can be to it turn back. So there's a second possibility. But becomes more interesting if you can play really four finger, like you know this distribution, uh, without to only distribution or on this, but with every finger and not repeating the finger. This goes also stepwise and can be played with, um, like I said, the boings up. You can see so with that is really we learn how to connect to this. So if we break, so and then it's of course the two leg or fourth and the two leg other. This is kind of um, uh, getting really busy and this, not not to not to get bored with the same way of practicing something. So we have always both strokes, uh, boings and both stroke and rhythmic. We can practice, but these are the main uh, boings and can be practiced. Pointed, 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 pointed. So different rhythms, there is uh, no end both to the possibility. But really, what matters is this distribution that is correctly made is the tune, and then go steps wise. You see, it stays uh, and pivoting the thumb, and in mode. This is the four finger scales. I do practice them of after also in eight notes group so that it's um, make it's very important to anticipate the mode. To know which mode is come so that you can do but it should be really practiced slowly but uh, this connection and shifting it's really well, well made you know the fluidity uh, what is written there in the text down it's uh, uh it's actually also the english second finger distribute the weight to the third finger so this is actually actually the weight goes to the third but of course, the thumb holds all this mass, <laughs> all this gravity. So, but it overgives and doesn't doesn't have tension. It just gives and then becomes the tension back. So that's this is little details what have to be practiced. That you can con control them even in playing. When you play. So then there's a the twelve notes. Whatever is the same system. No? <laughs> more you know three three shiftings not only two okay so that's what and then we have up downstairs down there we which finger we kind of um, can shift also not only the thumb we can shift also with the first finger and second finger okay um, I do also again the third chapter it's um, playing in the thumb position this um, scales but it's not starting with one like we did the beginning but up to the third finger so that means so it is a actually what 
what we did practice until now with this distribution. So it's up to the third finger and always anticipation for the thumb on the other string that remains here also. The way we hold the string go down without the grip here is also all this is becoming um, kind of reflex and you can use it all the time. Okay, so and then what comes also fun uh, the scales over four string in thumb position. That, like I said, we started with first finger, and now with the third finger, and then was also so B uh, uh, fingering when it, it's like starting with the thumb from the E string. start with the thumb as, as, as main main uh, note and then here is uh, scales over four string thumb position with uh, four fingers so that we kind of we kind of learning to, to, to what we learn here um, stepwise now we can connect it over four strings Actually, what is really interesting is the way we come to a certain position. So you see, if we go here, and actually we are in a minor third position when we overgive to the other string. And then we open and go and this is So it's always anticipation, everything. But which position we are? So we kind of overgiving is minor third, and then major third position, and then overgiving and minor third again in the hand position. So we kind of anticipate the time on the other string, and then we have a certain position. It's not always the same. So we, we combine about all the time. It's not a four finger like this, but it's really connective, distributor fingering. Okay, uh, it's very long, one hour and eight minutes. Uh, that's, like I said, it will not be possible to do this, uh, all the 10 chapters now, but I thought it's important to show you the main, the main uh, ideas of this scale system. So these, rot uh, these rotations are important, circular movements, the way we keep the string, the way we put the hand, the way uh, we distribute, the way we're shifting. This is uh, really uh, the important points here. Close hands, uh, open hand to the extremes. Um, closer hand, more like open, all of these points that's going to be pr practiced in this case. Last, I'll just show you the fourth chapter, this is taken really uh, from Galamian. So he makes, repeats here uh, the notes, the third. So he has 24 notes and it comes back. See the up is starting with four notes. And so on and two others. But 
has the idea um, how did I do the fingerings here of course there are uh, also here many possibilities but I don't use the many possibilities I just use it now a different system so actually it can be practiced so like I said let's play more linear and more transversal or combined but in this case I do really use four notes in every string so the string of course it's um, it's um, it's longer could be also that I go later on the G string or I go later on the D string so I can make it that but this is if you practice well the scales before it's not necessary to practice now it just be joy kind of uh, the classical way of um, of making the fingerings and more more natural hand shape that's why i use this fingering for the for this case mostly okay so actually this goes in all tonalities and in all minor and and, and melodic and harmonic uh, so it's really a fun because actually everything is just it will be i try to use the same fingering quasi the same same system so the same we use it uh, that's why I think it's, it's this systematical makes us really organize very well and know how to use it in any tonalities so that you're not anymore afraid of playing any keys okay so um, Of course, there are little details, what we have talked already, the way we um, anticipate the first finger on the other string. And the way we use the shifting, so... So we have talked with it. There is a new finger, old finger, old bow, new bow. Okay, I think that's all for now. Um, was a challenge for me to imagine that I talk it to people during I'm recording, but that's come become now more an experience because in the last period we have to do this and. Um, to be coherent even we don't have anybody in front of us um, but the imagination the power of imagine imagination is important also in playing and the way we all realize visualize our instrument is also very important so it's a good practicing for all of us for me too uh, thank you very much for listening i'm really looking for forwards on the 11th um, to answer your questions uh, I'd love it to have contact with you and to have any many questions as possible um, regarding what I said it here. Uh, for sure, it's many things was maybe not could be said because that is um, nearly impossible. But I think the main idea is um, it's spoken already. Thank you very much for listening and looking forward to see you. Bye-bye.